Salute to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call. Mayor Candelora. Here. Deputy Mayor Wentworth. Councilor Angeloni. Here. Councilor Caprio. Here. Councillor Diamond? Here. Councillor Esposito? Here. Councillor Fonin? Here. Councillor Fucci? Here. Councillor Rose? Here. We have a motion to approve the minutes from the October 1st, 2013 WPCA Town Council meeting. So moved. Do we have to remake the corrections that we made? I mean, because this is just a re vote because we it's didn't have five. Re-vote. It's just a re vote. Okay. Because there were corrections on the original, on the minutes the last time. So those are already noted? Yeah. Okay. Second. Uh, I believe that was moved by Councillor Foreman and seconded by Councillor Angeloni. Roll call. Mayor Candelora? Yes. Councillor Angeloni? Yes. Councillor Caprio? Yes. Councillor Diamond? Abstain. Councillor Esposito? Abstain. Councillor Foreman? Yes. Councillor Fucci? Abstain. Councillor Rose? Abstain. I have a motion to approve the December 10th, 2013 WPCA Town Council meeting. Still doesn't no, because there's it's still a four, because four people had to abstain, and right. there's four voted for it. So it, it still didn't pass, because we need five. Right. Mm. There. Need but yeah, yeah. Really, right. Uh, Councilor Diamond and, and Rose have to, because they weren't right. members of Right, and then Fucci council. and Esposito weren't at the meeting. We weren't there, yeah. Right. So they can't vote on it. <laughs> uh, for Joanne and everybody else to be here. So. so you need Rose, you need you, Joanne, need Joanne. Joanne. And five to right. make the fifth vote. Okay, I just we'll carry it for the carry it to the next. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> All right, we have a motion to approve the December tenth, two thousand thirteen, WPCA Town Council. So moved. Second. Moved by Councillor Fonin, seconded by Councillor Angeloni. Roll call. Mayor Candelara? Yes. Councillor Angeloni? Yes. Councillor Caprio? Yes. Councillor Diamond? Yes. Councillor Esposito? Abstain. Councillor Fonin? Yes. Councillor Fucci? Abstain. Councillor Rose? Yes. Um, I just have one comment for the clerk. It's um, on the minutes, if it says attachment, you know, on 13H or whatever it is. Can you just make sure that that's part of the minutes that gets filed and posted on to the website? Because otherwise people don't know what it is. Because like there's the tax refunds and stuff and none of that is attached to the minutes. Okay. Okay, thanks. Okay, we have a motion to approve December 18, 2013 special meeting, town council. So moved. Second. Moved by Councilor Angeloni, seconded by Councilor Fornan. Roll call. Mayor Candelara? Yes. Councillor Angeloni? Yes. Councillor Caprio? Abstain. Councillor Diamond? Yes. Councillor Esposito? Abstain. Councillor Fonin? Yes. Councillor Fucci? Yes. Councillor Rose? Yes. Water P- Pollution Control Authority meeting agenda, correspondence, citizen statements. <coughs> Item four, unfinished business, discussion and action. Item A, request to connect additional apartment and building H. 1739 Fox and Road, which was tabled from December 10th, 2013. Uh, the, the applicant contacted me last week by phone and uh, requested, said he'd like to withdraw his application at this point. Um, they don't have to move forward with it. Um, so it was too late to get it. It was on the agenda, but um, they're not in bank. So not going through with it. That's correct. 
Kirk, that's 1739 Fox and Road. Was there somebody in that apartment at one time they were renting it to? I got a little bit of the history in terms of apparently uh, there was a basement that somebody came in um, and they used it for the, uh, the handyman or something. This is what I was told. I was trying to take it in. Um, well, right. If they were renting it, they should have paid taxes. I, well, I understand they weren't renting it, but the person that was working for them lived there. Somehow it, it evolved into more of an apartment complex. Exactly how long I don't have the answer to all that. Um, and what they were originally going to do is come in and so now what, what is the space being used for right now? Uh, it's occupied. There's, there's, the building official got involved and there's no occupancy. Um, I believe there's a fire there, and that's where um, things got discovered over in that building. Um, that's the history I know. And, and they were looking to, okay, if they don't have something, they wanted to initially make it a legal tool unit they could rent out. No, everything else they have there is all up on uh, all their sewer fees and all that stuff? All sewer fees, yeah. I, I know, I, mean, I haven't walked through every building to see what it is, but all the units were approved in the um, late 80s and, and the 90s. A bunch of units they put the additions on. Apparently this unit was in the basement. And again, I'm repeating what I was told that um, the sort of work area that evolved into the living area for the game. And that's no longer occupied according to the building official. Um, they were looking into the ability to occupy it. Um, at this point, they asked that we, you know, they, they wanted to withdraw at this point in time. Um, okay. All right. okay. Thank you. <coughs> New business. Item A, Operation and Maintenance Services, Sanitary Sewer Collection System. Yeah, I think if you remember the last time uh, Kurt had explained that the contract is uh, coming around uh, and ready to renegotiate or put that RFP back out together. And I just, I'd like to support his, his uh, memo from the previous meeting um, and the request to use a modified RFP with a sort of uh, two envelope, sealed envelope. Uh, process um, I think would probably get us the best qualified candidate given it's a you know it's a highly specialized field and I think his you know he's been through it before and, and I certainly uh, support that and I think that's probably the best route to go and just looking for guidance from the council that uh, if there aren't any objections that's Kurt and I will be working on that and and get that thing going Just to add, in terms of the time frame uh, and other items, um, the intent was, I had a I had sort of, I just showed you the, uh, the old one in the last meeting, but update that, make a few changes, and then run it by the town attorney, and then the back to the WPCA for your final blessing, just to make sure you, you know, you, you're seeing the way you want to go. And again, as Mike said, the, the important thing is qualification. Uh, make sure somebody has the ability to do the job properly. We don't want to pick somebody on a low price and find out that we have a problem that really they can't maintain the sewers. So this is a major implication we can't do it. So the way we, when I was recommending and my support it was to practice qualifications, make sure you're qualified. If they're qualified, then we're looking at prices. Um, if they're not qualified, we don't want to get into look at the price. So if they don't have the ability to do the work or, or meet our what does looking at the price have to do in terms of committing us on their qualifications? <coughs> I mean, qualification is really the key on this, on this whole thing. I hear that. Yeah. I mean, you get, we have gone, you know, sometimes we have gone, and sometimes the price seems to slant something into an area you don't really want to go to. We have had problems with going that way periodically. Um, again, look, I've seen it, other, other towns do it a lot. They look for qualifications, and then if you're qualified, then they'll open the other envelope if, if, if you don't meet that qualification. Hopefully, only the people that are qualified are going to submit on it. But again, sometimes you get a mom and a pop that uh, trying to do. I'm not sure I understand the, the procedure, but I, I really don't find anything objectionable about it, but I just don't see that it enhances the process. But if you somehow feel that it's 
important, so I'll defer to you. Kirk, Kirk, could you go to the microphone? Just so oh, people can hear. That's right. <coughs> and, and, and again, a couple of things. We'll run by uh, the town attorney's office, and then we'll come back to you to we'll find a look at any questions. Before we go out, we have to make any changes. I'd rather everybody see it be fully aware of. This was the company that stocks the pumps and has all the parts. Well, this is the company does the that maintenance that we talked does about the last. The right. 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 The, 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 they, they, pump stations are our biggest thing. They flush the lines, uh, but we've got a half dozen pump stations that are uh, critical to operations. Right. Okay. All right. All right. Okay, thank you. Thank you, <clears throat> Now, do you need this suggested motion this evening? Or no. It's going to come back to you. It's just more uh, to keep yeah. the involved with the process. I know John was looking at the contract. Yeah, and we're going to modify and get back to you. Okay. Um, item uh, six: citizen statements and. Oh, did they move this one? Yeah, uh, so you moved it to the yeah just to clarify, there's an, everyone should be on the uh, amended agenda because yeah. we had to move. Uh, yeah. I in a, yeah, unfortunately, I put the 5B in the wrong spot, so it went from 5B right. to uh, 13C. Okay. Um, citizen statements and petitions. Okay, regular town council meeting. Uh, item 7, reports of committees, boards, and commissions. Uh, item A, Economic Development Commission. Uh, hasn't met, but will meet on Thursday, January 23rd, 6.30 uh, p.m. Um, in advance of the charrette that's rescheduled for the 25th, Saturday the 25th at 1 o'clock, uh, same place, MBIS cafeteria. Um, item B, Permanent Project Building Committee. Uh, they meet on Monday, next Monday, so there was no meeting. Okay. Um, I'm just going to give a quick report on the fire department. Um, I was told this Thursday they were going to New Jersey to uh, look at the new apparatus, and um, we should be seeing that truck very soon. Um, item 8, town manager's report. Item A, community center update. Yeah, um, community center update 8A, actually you should have also uh, a revised uh, 8A in the, uh, in the folder. Um, that is uh, from Hibbert and Rosa Architects. Uh, Principal Tom Hibbert is here and, and will speak uh, later on in the agenda, but we're uh, looking to uh, bring uh, their services in for the um, Stanley T. Williams Community Center uh, to look at that. Um, uh, issue with the bathroom in terms of uh, locating and, and um, the reason the revise is we actually have a uh, Tom came back with further uh, detail in terms of breakout in terms of uh, services and, and uh, uh, costs and pricing uh, so that's why you have a revise there but uh, essentially it'll go to the um, permanent project building committee for their meeting on the 13th to to look and review and then come back uh, to the council in terms of contract for approval uh, just as a FYI, to, that's why that's in there. We are working on it, and we're trying to line everything up. And that's just that's just uh, Tom's services in terms of uh, of running this project. Obviously, we'll have bricks and mortar costs uh, associated when we actually uh, do the uh, build out for the what we call the uh, unisex bathroom, if you will. Okay. Uh, <coughs> item B, Farm River. Farm River Bridge project letter to business owners. Yep, the, he uh, had the uh, s meeting last night uh, with business owners. You should have, uh, again, supplemental information in your packet, uh, including the attendance sheet, sign in sheet. Um, most of, I think, the, the major principals involved in that area were, were here at the table. Uh, it was a very good meeting, a very productive meeting. Um, at, even before the meeting started, there was a lot of you know, questions and, and, and so forth. Um, and Kurt was there a, a, as well, and they had a lot of uh, information um, and a lot of their answers, uh, questions um, that they had brought forward, the DOT answered, and gave the, uh, the timeline is there as well. It's really much going to be 
reduced to a 75-day uh, construction uh, that they're looking at. But the permitting, the right-of-way, all of that takes a long time. Uh, it, it looks and appears to be a 2016 uh, construction season. But there are concerns from the business owners that are there what the timing of that impact would be. Uh, if, for example, if the, the, the owner of the pool uh, company, you know, May to June is, is the bread and butter. Right. You know, so can they move the schedule one way or the other uh, to try and, and try and get that done? And um, so, uh, to, and to that extent, it was um, I think very productive. So, and I, I'll, I'll certainly defer to Kurt, but they are going to keep us in the loop in, in terms of um, their design, everything they heard last night to incorporate. Uh, we should hear back from them in about five to six months on that. that um, uh, I want to say, uh, is it the um, final? Design, semi final design, yeah. So it was, it was a positive meeting, and I think they were, they were, they were I mean, they had nobody left until every answer, you know, every question was answered uh, that they wanted to pose to them. So I think DOT was uh, to be commended for coming out here a, a third time to really give them that forum uh, that they wanted uh, to have. So um, I don't know if Kurt, you want to add anything to that? Yeah. Um Think on both ends, and, um, in, in, in the end, DLT will be sending the plans as they develop them, and I will up be corresponding with the property owners to make sure they're aware of any changes or <coughs> any questions they have. I'll I can forward them on to DLT as well, and DLT open themselves up to any, you know any resident want to to pass a comment or concern on directly to them. They'll take it as well. I think the dialogue's good. The, the, the issues that were of concern have been have voiced. Um, DOT has made, made a positive step towards that, and they're looking to do a few more modifications to make sure that those concerns are addressed. Okay. Thank, you. Thank you, Colonel. Any other questions? Item C, Steep Grant Application 2014 Recommendation. Yeah, there's a uh, memo in there uh, in your packet to, just to explain that the um, round next round is open and the deadline is uh, mid uh, April, uh, mid April. And uh, what I'd like to just get some direction before I go forward and, and uh, <coughs> fill out an application in terms of telling you, letting you know what's uh, what's eligible. And certainly uh, there may be something that's not on this list, um, <coughs> but I'm recommending that we probably take a look at the uh, from the recreation side looking at those tennis courts which we've had in the capital improvement plan um, the application as you're probably aware will allow up to half a million dollars in, in terms of funding um, and there's no guarantee uh, but um, that's the limit on the application process so it is capital project uh, so it's not programmatic it's bricks and mortar type of thing and I've just kind of highlighted some of the uh, items there that are also eligible. So I'm just looking for, for guidance if, if that's a direction that the council wants to go. I'll certainly uh, I have prepare a that. Um, you mentioned in your recommendation the Northwood Park tennis courts and basketball court, yet in your um, letter in terms of the um, state of Connecticut, you were already had approval for those uh, tennis courts and basketball <coughs> court. Right. I mean, so it, that is, isn't that hasn't that already been approved that piece? Well, it's so it's a, it's approved now uh, through a capital Im improvement plan through the state that would be eligible if we wanted to uh, pay for that under our capital improvement project using LOSIP, loose I think it's LOSIP and uh, Town A Road uh, that way. Uh, we could you could essentially <coughs> take those out if we were to apply for the tennis courts, get the funding through Steep, and then. Oh, you can take those out. Okay. Take those out and then essentially say, okay, uh, we now like to reallocate or, or ask for something else on the list that would be eligible. It, in the budget for last year, in our capital improvement plan, we had put money to do the tennis courts at Memorial Field first, and then Northford Park was going to be the next year. Well, I was just confused because it is approved in that letter from the state. Right, and that was just to get a <laughs> class of, that was to get a, um, approval for reclassification of funds from the state in regards to that. Um, my concern is that the money that's in the CIP plan for the memorial courts is quite a bit less 
than the estimate that's in here from the tennis courts. I mean, we're way off mm. on that. So if we went ahead and did the CIP plan and did the memorial courts this year according to what we had budgeted, where would we, I mean, I know we're off by over $100,000. We don't have that money to do that, to do the memorial courts according to this estimate based on the estimate we got last year. Okay, why would resurfacing? No. This is a total re rip out and redo. Mm -hmm. so. And that's what we were doing. That's that's what we were doing. So you're saying that it jumped? It jumped up way uh, over $100,000 $100, based on- $100,000 based on for the same job. <clears throat> well, based on the estimates that we were given during the budget process last year, how much it would cost to do, well, that's what we based our decision on was right. the information that was given to us as to same what- Same scope of work. Right, that, that they weren't gonna be just resurfaced because it has been many years since we did them. So it was, you know, tear them up, redo sure, them, the sure. same thing with the basketball courts. So that's why we couldn't do them all at once. We're, so I'm- Where's the second number coming from? Is what, well, the second number is this one. I, I, I see that, but like who's, who, who, who came up with that? Is that based on estimates that we got or is that? Um, yes, yeah. <laughs> that, was, that was cost estimates that were given to us during the budget and season. And they jumped up $100,000 from the, that's crazy. Might have been a different company. Because uh, I think there's two, be, there's yeah. two companies um, that I'm aware of. Uh, well, I mean, before any of that work gets done, we're going to go out to bid. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. 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 Those are right. Those are just placeholder numbers, They're right? Just until, numbers, yeah. Right. Until you okay. actually right, put it out on the street to bid it. <clears throat> So I guess, you know, just looking at that, it, it, it does make sense to, to put an application, there's no guarantee, but if it, if you get for the uh, tennis and, and courts um, to look at prioritizing maybe in the application, how we put the application together, and then, you know, if that doesn't go through, the fallback is it's, it's approved in the CIP. But it gives us latitude that if it does get approved and we get funded, um, then we can look at, you know, real you know, uh, a redesignation of something else. Yeah. Does that make sense? I mean, yeah. Yeah. unless it was, you know, so I'll proceed that way unless there's objections. We'll yeah, sorry for the Steve Grant, Steve Grant with okay. the with a yeah. basketball tennis court mine. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Great. I'll, I'll bring something back at one of the future meetings before the April deadline. Yeah. Okay. All right. I think that's a good move. That's also for a facility study also, right? I think I saw in there. Um, that is in the, uh, not in here, but in the uh, CIP, I plan. Just to clarify, what happened was we had a deadline of November 15th to get a waiver on some new municipal grant money. And the question was, what project would the state allow under that $280,000? So I threw a list together of six or seven projects, mm -hmm. the tennis courts, the facility study, a few others, to see if the state would even buy into those. If they said, they said yes to our projects, now we have to go back and say, okay, of the $280,000 we have, what do you want to spend based on the list that they approved? So what Mike is suggesting is take out the tennis courts, put those under the STEEP program, apply at least, apply for that. That leads you to the rest of the ones to say, okay, which one of those do you want to try for that $283,000? Knowing the state has already blessed it, whether it's the facility study, which is 100,000 roughly numbers you talked about. That, that was the process. It wasn't that they were approved Okay. As gospel, it was that was uh, the state will allow those expenditures okay. under this new program. Okay. It's up to us to say we want to use those programs dollars. Well, for those a, a facility study is probably something this town really needs to do since it's never been done. <coughs> exactly. And we have uh, some serious issues with some things that are going on with building and stuff. So that would be a good idea to put it into that. I think. Right. That was, that was the underlying goal, if you remember, from the last couple of budget cycles. <coughs> Why spend money on, in addition to building X, let's get a you know, roster of the whole situation and see, prioritize things and make an idea from there. So I agree with you. That's probably the, the wisest money to spend that first and then have a game plan, what you want to do. Exactly. You've got to look 10, 15 years into the future. Thanks, Anthony. Um, any further questions? Uh, item D, the Nutmeg Network. I had asked Michael to put this on. Um, 
<coughs> there was discussion. About yeah, there's a comments. packet uh, in here. Um, it's an opportunity um, to upgrade uh, the fiber optic, basically called the Nutmeg uh, Network that's already been uh, established with the uh, public safety and the um, Connecticut you know, public schools as well. Uh, so this is sort of the uh, piggyback on top of that that they're rolling out uh, for the municipalities. And we'd have an opportunity um, to submit uh, application for uh, grant funding of the build-out uh, purposes. And then uh, these <laughs> pages aren't numbered, but it, it, I think you, you saw a slide here um, about the costs uh, on that uh, to the town in the terms of the reoccurring costs of maintaining it on a, uh, you know, uh, internet fee uh, on a megabyte per month and then a port fee uh, per month. So um, the prices come down significantly than what they were talking about a month or a year ago, uh, that it looks, you know, affordable at this point. Uh, rough calculations are about 2200 uh, uh per year uh, for the town to join after if we're successful in getting the grant for the build out. Uh, then it would be an ongoing maintenance cost of about $2,300 to, to uh, join up to get the high-speed uh, connections. Now, what ports would you um, choose to do, and what benefit would we get out of this? Well, good question. I think, well, I'm hoping that, uh, well, it's a good question in terms of defining port and, and maybe the town hall as a, as a port. Uh, I'm not sure, but we'll have to we'll have to figure that out. We, I mean, we've submitted an application that doesn't uh, obligate us to anything at this point, just to get in, in line in terms of uh, what they, you know, in terms of their deadlines. Um, but I would think, you know, town hall to be able to communicate with our other, you know, satellite uh, office, uh, you know. They'll tie you into the other 169 towns, basically. Well, well, yeah, no, I think it's yeah, I think it's I think it's on the fiber optic. I don't know if there's any limit to where or who we can talk to. Uh, once we get the fiber, and it, maybe Anthony has a little bit more information on that, because uh, from a public safety <coughs> side point, they've been using it for a while. You're 100 percent correct. The, 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 I started going to these meetings probably last April, and at that point, it was a $500 right. monthly deal to do one port fee. Right. And what I had got some people to give me some pricing on was to put a wireless port at the high school, where currently there's a CEN drop now. My goal was to have this building talk wirelessly to the, to the high school, the police station, and public works. At that point, it was probably uh, about a $200 a month going to $500. So I figured you guys would never buy into that. Uh, as Mike had mentioned, now that same deal, $500, is now about a $200 a month fee. So it makes it more palatable for the town hall to go from roughly, I think we're about 119 now on cable internet to $200 on fiber which ties us into every town in the state and also allows us to do, like to create a sister community with towns that have similar software to ours. Uh, New, Mil New Milford comes to mind. They have our same administrative software. We can work out a deal with them that say this building is wiped out tomorrow with a, a fire, or we can go to their town hall and our data will be backed up in both places. They can come here simultaneously the same way. So there are a lot of advantages. The, the, the drop is currently in town the CEN drop is at the high school, and the public safety data network drop is at the police station. There's also a third drop in town. Every firehouse in, in the state, every fire department in the state got one drop. Ours was chosen to be at the ambulance, but that's where the chief's office is, and that's kind of our, our, our busiest station. So we actually have three drops already in town for the Nutmeg Network, the ambulance building, the 911 center, and the, and the school has a CEN drop. So, the paperwork we had submitted by uh, um, December 31st to get in line for the grant that was accepted. Now we have uh, we got a quote from uh, this girl Wendy at uh, UConn for the actual cost to connect, as Mike had alluded to, and that will be <coughs> applied for the grant for those dollars. Uh, it's not cheap; it's over $100,000 right. for that, just to go from here to the high school, believe it or not, uh, a relatively short distance. So. Assuming we can get the grant to cover those dollars, then it becomes the, the monthly deal of $200 a month, roughly, for fiber internet, which is obviously a lot better than where we are now. Right. So the advantages are, are huge. Mm. back to the Stanley T. Williams um, scope of services by the architect. Okay. 
Um, uh, I want to get brought up to speed on that. So, were these the architects that have done all the work up there? No. And they were not? No. So, how did they get invited to do this? And was this by themselves, or was there a process and a whole bunch of architects submitted a program, a, a, a thing? Or? Uh, well, the answer is Tom and, and his firm are involved with us on the roof project. Mm -hmm. And so, looking at the quality of work there, uh, we went off and looked at, in the interest of time, a state bid. He's on the state bid, and we're piggybacking off of that. So the final number, though, that's above our, what are we up to, Anthony, now? Is it 7,500 you can do non-bid? Correct. But that gets waived if they're a state-approved contractor? Right, state or you can do that? Or? Yeah, the ordinance allows us to piggyback off any state or other uh, agency bid, other towns. Okay. We'll see how good they did when we get to the roof uh, later on in the agenda. Uh, item 9, community events and presentations. Uh, I just want to mention, I know over the next few days with the cold weather, we have the libraries open and town hall for warming centers, so for any of the seniors. Um, item 10, citizen statements, petitions, and correspondence. Item 11, resignations and appointments. Item A, resignation, David Bowen, Hazardous Waste and Recycling Committee. I make a motion to accept the resignation of David Bowen with regrets. I'll second. Second. <coughs> uh, moved by Councilor Angeloni, uh, seconded by Councilor Fusey. Um, roll call. Mayor Candelora? Yes. Councilor Angeloni? Yes. Councilor Caprio? Yes. Councilor Diamond? Yes. Councilor Esposito? Yes. Councilor Fawnin? Yes. Councilor Fusi? Yes. Councilor Rose? Yes. Okay. Um, item B, appointments to town boards, commissions as per attached list from the town clerk's office. Um, I don't know of any appointments yet. Um, well, we, we don't have the, the only thing, the one, one from, from the board, board of bed. bed. Which was already I make a motion to accept the appointment of uh, Phil Dahlmeyer to the Permanent Project Building Committee as a Board of Education rep. I'll second it. Moved by Councilor Angeloni, seconded by Councilor Fusi. Roll call. Mayor Candelora? Yes. Councilor Angeloni? Yes. Councilor Caprio? Yes. Councilor Diamond? Yes. Councilor Esposito? Yes. Councilor Fonin? Yes. Councilor Fusi? Yes. <laughs> Council Rose. Yes. I'd also like to make a motion to <laughs> approve the appointment of Deb Prunier to the Pension Committee as the regular member and Lou Padenoster as the alternate to the Pension Committee as Board of Education reps. Was that the second? <laughs> I'll second it. Moved by Councilor Angeloni, <coughs> seconded by Councilor Fusi. Roll call. Was that the second? <laughs> um, Mayor Candelora? Yes. Councilor Angeloni? Yes. Councilor Caprio? Yes. Councilor Diamond? Yes. Councilor Esposito? Yes. Councilor Fawnin? Yes. Councilor Fusi? Yes. Councilor Rose? No. I agree with you. Michael, I believe after next week uh, we'll have some more appointments. Okay. For Great. committees and yeah, the next meeting we'll have. Right. right. I mean, yeah. Since we're on appointments, is, isn't the is the building committee short one member? That's short. And I believe so planning and zoning as well. So will they have a quorum, or they don't have a quorum? No, they yeah, no, they, they, have have quorum. they still have, they still have a quorum. They have a quorum. Yeah. 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 Yeah, it just makes it difficult. But we've been through with if it's vacations or yep. uh, out right. of town or work related stuff. Right. Okay, item 12, unfinished business, discussion and action. Item A, updates to defined benefit plan documents, police union, which was tabled from July 9th, 2012. Uh, nothing yet. We haven't yet heard back from the uh, police, but we are inquiring, and hopefully um, next meeting we'll have something. Waiting, obviously waiting for them to, to ratify that, uh, their side, and then we'll bring it once we hear from them. 
Well, since we're on this, though, I got a couple of questions that maybe Anthony can answer. If, and I'm not quite sure exactly what what was done in 2012. I guess is that that's what it said. So something was done, or it got like piggybacked in with a couple of other pension changes. So we've had retirements at the PD since then. So which pension agreement have you been, have had the actuaries or whoever been following when they leave? Uh, none of the changes impacted those folks that left. Okay. Got it. So do we have to make the changes since it's... Well, the document should be correct, yeah. See, because it's, it's going to end next in June of next 2015. Year. 2015. <laughs> but, so, okay. Well, Briefly, what are the changes that... Well, what happened was, just to give you a brief update, every 10 years or so we have the actuaries go through and a lot of times they make changes to the plans, they're adopted, they don't get put to black and white on paper. Also in those periods, uh, legislative changes happen mm -hmm. and they need to be promulgated into the documents as well. So every 10 years or so we have the actuaries go through, make sure of the changes that they negotiated, town council bless are in here, Make sure the lawyers go through any changes that the government's passed are in here and brought to date and make gets new copies. Well, what happened this time was the lawyer who went through to do the legislative up cha updates changed a couple of sections relating to the 20-year pension clause, the way it was supposed to be calculated. And that was never part of his, his scope of work to do. So the police union caught that, and it took us a while to get everything squared away, and then uh, we've got, we're basically reverting back to the 2004 language, which was what was adopted by all the parties. Everybody's happy with that. It's just a matter of now, as Mike mentioned, to get the police union to bless it, and then you guys will bless it and be put to bed for another year and a half. So, so basically, it will be legislative changes that Correct. will be Correct. It's updated. all that's happened. Exactly. On, on the police plan, on, on, on the, the town employee plan and the fire plan, there have been changes that this body has endorsed, never got put to black and white. So those changes, the actuary put forward, as well as the same legislative changes, so all three, you guys approved the last two, the uh, town employees and the fire plan, I think in July of 12, and it was the police plan that got held up because of the changes that should not have been made, but were incorporated. Were incorporated. Okay. So Anthony, when, where this is gonna be a big document to have um, done by June of 2015, what, what avenues of educating us on what other towns and stuff are going forward, and when do we need to start this process? I mean, should an actuary come in and talk to us? Or, um... Well, the, the first one you have this coming June is the town employee pension. So we need to get on that. Well, we're, gonna, we're waiting to the AFSCME. We have to re, uh, negotiate with the four AFSCME contracts. Those are up this coming July 1st. The pension is up July 1st for the um, non-police folks as well. So that's first on the agenda to get that squared away. And then we have, like I said, a year and a half theoretically to wait for the police plan. Okay. So why are we just starting this stuff now when it's up this year? Uh, Mike has made contact with the AFSCME folks. We had a, we had a change in the AFSCME rep, uh, the last person uh, on the clerical highway and public and um, clerical highway and library uh, retired. And we have even the union folks themselves haven't been able to contact the person to see who actually the, the new rep is. To get the ball rolling. I guess from my point it's of start view, pretty soon. you know, there is a deadline. And <clears throat> we don't want to be sloppy. I, I wasn't happy with the way the things went down, you know, a couple of years ago. You know, we're like, we weren't even starting at, at, after they had run out. So from my point of view, I would like to hit the deadline. Um, you know, and I mean, the union's got to give them somebody that's going well, to. The problem is them. they're always throwing stuff in our lap at the last minute now. That's but again, all those other ones that you said are are fairly easy compared to the what is probably going to go on with the PD one. Right. Um, you know, that's going to be a big one that can take some time. So. Correct. And plus, the town plan too is a closed plan since '99, so the membership is dwindling over time. Uh, a lot less people involved in that now than there were, you know, 20 years ago. So. Okay. Thank you. Item B, Potato and Corn Festival, Proposal and Financial Report. 
Yes, you have both in uh, item 12B. This is a memo in terms of outlining the progress we've made in terms of Pam and I working with um, instructions from the last meeting and uh, trying to figure out uh, the uh, best possible scenario. So you have the outline there that we, you know, we've identified as, as we said, uh, individual looking to uh, has the experience. Rose and uh, talking with her, she's uh, interested, strongly interested, and. Um, you know, we're looking forward to pursuing that in addition to the ideas that came from this body at the last meeting to talk about, you know, ways in which we can, um, you know, improve revenue or increase revenue with a gate and explore that possibility, uh, you know, car shows and modifying, you know, revenues there uh, in addition to looking ex at expenses. And so those are, those are all, you know, on the table. And, you know, I, I'm looking favorably to say that, yeah, we, we've got, I think we've got, uh, a scenario here where we can pull this off. Um, you know, what I'd like to do is, is you know, get the uh, you know, direction of the council here to pursue with, uh, with Rose and uh, begin to negotiate. I think the issue will be whether or not we can get contractual versus what I think we can get is a, a compromise in terms of a seasonal type of employee uh, and pretend, uh, potentially go in, and negotiate those those ideas but to get her on board get her on board now and and proceed with uh the festival for 2014 and i think it's all i think it's doable i mean uh, pam is here as well and pam has addressed joe your issue with the you know the washout or the catastrophic event what's our liability uh and, and pam if you want to uh i know she's worked on it in terms of of, <laughs> of she's got a handout for that as well so you know we've been working behind the scenes to no, they don't. They don't have that. Um, so, um, you know, just to bounce this off you at this point, uh, that you're okay and comfortable with with proceeding in that scenario with that strategy in place, um, we'll go forward. Thanks, man. Thanks, man. Okay. Attached to the, you know, as promised, the, the attached to the proposal on the strategy for management or coordination of it is the background uh, detailed material that you'd ask for on the actual um, accounting. So that is in there as well. Um, but I thought we'd start with the uh, strategy portion first and see if that makes sense. Mind you, these are, you know, approximates. These are guesstimated <coughs> expenses and revenues that, um, you know, if we were to go through such a weekend, that, you know, in my mind, that's a pretty good guesstimate as to what could happen. If there was rain. Or could happen. Whatever. You know, again, approximates. Yeah, because I think, I mean, you, you can, uh, Pam, you, you have obviously more um, detail and, and experience, but... You know, it's, we had talked about it before, the, and it's a valid concern, what happens when we get a catastrophic, um, a much of the, doing much of the uh, sponsorship <coughs> revenue uh, before the event even opens uh, as, a, as a way of reducing our, our exposure. Right, and what, you know, other, other festivals, fairs, what have you, there's been a, um, you know, there's, there's some different scenarios there. In some cases, people look to make revenue dirt through uh, percentages of vendors during an event as you may have heard that or you know some there's been some people that said I, I, I'm so I'm, I'm concerned why you haven't gone in that route well this is why I really like this this plan is because we do get upfront money everybody's in it for the same kind of risk you know you want us you want a place here this is our placeholder this is some of the revenues that we get up front and unfortunately if it rains all weekend long we're, we're both in a pickle you know, if we had gone toward a percentage-based type of scenario, we wouldn't get that up front. So there's a little bit of protection there in that respect. Uh, 
And also, just a reminder too, now when this all began years ago, there was always a risk, but it never really got to this level because it was always put in the, the Parks and Recreation's programming account that already had a, a cushion that was continually doing better year after year as long as we continued doing programs and you made a dollar here or $20 here or $100 here. And that was always kept out of the budget. It was always a self-sustaining account through programming. And the festival itself always stayed in that account. So therefore, even if there were a rain out, say, year four, five, six, and seven, it never had to go to that <coughs> extent to come to this level because our programming account would have covered that. And today, that would be the same scenario. So unless, of course, there was such a significant amount of expenses that we would have to come to this level and say, oh my goodness, we need X amount of money. But that would only be if our Parks and Rec programming account couldn't cover that. question on the expenditures for the, the last year's Potato Fest under other contractual there's who is Northeast or wire Northeast is that the amusement yes people okay <coughs> so that's the amount we had to pay them back because we took in all the revenue from the rides and then we had to pay them their percentage yes okay Is there any objection with the with the strategy of hiring the coordinator to go forward at this point? Well, I guess it. I, I mean, what are, are you looking at hourly at a flat rate, or what are you? Yeah, uh, uh, b yeah, basically an hourly. We're trying to you know work the numbers and and uh, in terms of the budget that we have, in terms of the allocation of of the festival funds, and and back into a number to look at structuring it such that. It's probably a you know a nine month type of seasonal type of employment um, that we have an hourly rate for without the benefits and, and so forth um, and see if we can't come to terms that way and I think we can I think there's there's money within the within the fund to do that. Well, haven't um, we been doing that kind of every year, hiring somebody? Uh, piece piecemeal. Yeah, I mean it's true. Yes, we have, right. but I mean, uh, not to this honest, extent. To be honest, this this is the first time I saw a financial breakdown like this <coughs> yeah. from anybody, and I've been asking for this for years. And this is the first time we actually have something besides just what we took in and what we put out. I mean, this is a little more detailed, and this gives me much more of an understanding of what we're doing here. Sure. You know, and, you know, that's a big help because there's, there's just a lot of question marks on things, and, you know, I know it's a great thing, and I... I personally, I think it's a great thing for the town too, but it's uh, definitely a lot of work, and we have been hiring somebody every year basically to do this. It's just been thrown around in the budget somehow, and you know we should just come right out and do it if we're going to do it, right? And do it right up front instead of uh, smoke and mirrors. I don't have a problem with that, and that all comes out of your budget, right, Pam? The potato festival budget. That's not a problem. And that's going to take pressure off of you? Well, you know, I, I think that um, without a doubt. I mean, okay, uh, the, good. yeah, the people that we've had in the past have, have worked with me. It's not as if I, I, I can't. I know you can't. I'm, to, you know, I'm with this person without can. a doubt, but, but it will definitely relieve a lot, a lot more, of stress. You know, I mean, it's going to have stress. to be together. Right. This person can't do it alone. Right. I understand. So it is a full fledged department. Um, team effort here along with all the volunteers. My biggest I problem is I'm always working when this is going on mm -hmm. and I never get to go. <laughs> have to find coverage. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, do we have numbers that we're talking about? I mean, 
Do we have a ballpark number? I mean, what would be a... Yeah, we're, we're looking in the, in the range of about $20,000 for, for the position in terms of coordinator. And that's no benefits, no nothing? Right, right. Is that on a 1099 type thing? Well, that's, that's what we got to negotiate. Okay. You know, and, and, and I'm thinking it may add. Probably not. From, from the f I haven't talked to the individual Pam has, but it, it's something we've got to negotiate. And I'm, I'm thinking the compromise is under a seasonal type of appointment, which REC does, uh, REC department does. Um, well, so that 20 actually goes up then because now we have all the payroll taxes. Uh, it does. It goes up. Right. I mean, yeah. It turns into about 25 then. Uh, no, I don't think it's. Uh, well, we're no, looking we, at we, a ceiling. We're looking yeah, at we're a looking ceiling, the ceiling and saying, like, you know, if we look at a $20 well, it's still an coming hour. Out of the potato festival thing. Right. It comes out of the festival, right? Right. So, right. I mean, the taxpayers aren't. Well, she's going to negotiate the best And the deal. expectations of that position are that the revenue base should increase. If someone can come in and spend the time that's necessary on those type right. of issues, so sponsorships. And the expectations right. are that this should be a little higher. Right. And then we can pay a little bit more attention to the expense side and this side. So it, you know, it, it should work out that way, rather right. than people scrambling to get it all done and running right. out of time and then just having to do this. Right. So I think the, I'm very optimist, you know, optimistic that that's the way it will be. We're going to do better over here, and we can cut some costs over here, because we're going to have someone that's going to have a full mind dealing with this. I only had one question, and it, maybe I just didn't see it, but I, I saw in your in the expenses for um, uh, I think it was North Haven police and I saw Brantford but I didn't actually see what what our police department Should I think it was 11 11,000 mm -hmm. yeah we're I, I believe it's in there because I, I don't okay know. I'll, I'll have to look again yeah, I remember that I, number sticks out in yeah your it sticks out my head because I know that added with North Haven and Brantford that okay. I was I was a little you know, surprised. Uh, so to the page four of my report, I've got the right hand corner. Uh huh. Halfway in the page where it says uh, extra duty 5146, extra duty 5157, 9056, and 2797. Oh, okay. Those are the two uh, invoices for our own. So about 117. Okay. Uh, okay. Thank you. You're so, with that going forward to look to, to save money. <laughs> Um, like the traffic duty and stuff, aren't there uh, other uh, avenues to hire people to direct traffic in and out of the event without having to tie up an officer? I agree. But again, um, I think we ran into that whole thing where, oh my God, time is running out. And then I, I didn't can. have any I think clue. That falls under the pre uh, premise of the, of the um, There's an police chief. Right. For, for the chart, he has control over how many people should be there and what they should be doing and stuff. That's right, like if a, sub con if a contractor called and says, hey, do I need a cop here? Right. The chief makes that decision. Right. So the chief right. is making that decision. Right, but I thought five on the ground, six on the ground, seven right. on the ground. Right. Right. Okay. Right. And typically I've sat with him, I didn't get to last year, but the years before, and said, can we get by with this during these hours? So we really tried to be economical in certain sense like during slow times. So, you know, I didn't get a chance to do that last year. Right. So I think we can look at that a little bit closer. Yeah. And, we, you know, we've, <coughs> we've actually talked about this. And interestingly enough, I mean, one of the issues, you know, you propose in terms of looking at the gate, if you did a gate and you took away the fee for parking, you'd have a better flow, right? You wouldn't have to have the stop and the backup that goes on to, you know, uh, and, and therefore potentially maybe one less officer, one less mm -hmm. person on there, so that we incorporated yeah, that in, and is. that's what we're kicking around right in terms here. of opportunities to lower expenses and improve revenue. No. Yeah, okay. Somebody's got to come to agreement on how much? I think the proposal looks good. should carry on with it. Yeah. I don't know what the rest is. Do we need a motion to, uh, to hire Roseanne or somebody else in this position now? I think it would be helpful. Just because of the freeze still. We've got a freeze on hiring, so hiring. I right. think we need to approve that. Right. We do. Okay. I'll make a motion to negotiate with Roseanne Krajewski um, for the position that, uh, that Pam's created as an as needed basis. <coughs> She's no well, position for the potato festival. Well, it, it, well, instead of having a name, can we just put to negotiate with an individual in case something happens yes, that it's not Roseanne? Right, 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 right. That they I'll can still that. have the right. And not to I'll second twenty thousand. To look for someone for the second. Mm -hmm. 
Moved by Councillor Rose, seconded by Councillor Caprio. Roll call. Mayor Candelaro? Yes. Councillor Angeloni? Yes. Councillor Caprio? Yes. Councillor Diamond? Yes. Councillor Esposito? Yes. Councillor Fawnen? Yes. Councillor Fusey? Yes. Councillor Rose? Yes. Thank you, Pam. Pam, are you good in terms of what you have from, you don't need anything else from us now to move so. forward with plans? I don't think so, I think we're gonna get started this okay, week. Okay, we saved the festival. Yeah. <laughs> Hurry up, August is coming. <laughs> Doesn't feel like August, but it's coming. <laughs> Man. Yeah. Item. Doesn't even feel like January. <laughs> um, item C: Senior Disabled Tax Study Committee proposal. Yes, there's a, a memo in there um, in your packet um, as outlined. The um, committee has been meeting uh, for the past couple of months um, and has let the last meeting it asked uh, to pursue and to to bring this to a head to bring to the. Council um, what they've been working on mm. and um, so you have this uh, document <coughs> here um, they'd like the tax freeze I'd like to to um, propose that the um, their proposals in there uh, the first the first half was just to explain um, or to highlight the fact of what the town currently has and I know Chris is here as well who administers uh, that portion that that program you know, this is a budgetary item that's in, that's in every year, um, and the cost of the town we know is seventy-five thousand. Um, what you see is, and part two is what the tax committee is looking for in terms of a tax freeze, basically modeled off of uh, Guilford and uh, and Durham, um, and that actually I didn't label it, but this uh, third page in isn't labeled but I took it from Guilford's website that is Guilford's the uh, rest of the documentation is, is Durham just so you'd have it as, as backup um, they'd, they'd like to to you know have the council um, you know deliberate on this and and um, discuss whether or not it's something feasible for the town to do whether or not we, you know you know the problem if that immediately jumps out to me is the is the very bottom line of the first page cost right. to the town <laughs> unknown right right <laughs> too many variables unless the cap is placed on expenditures i hope that we can't buy a pig and a poke we have to know what we're giving up right no it, it, you're right and 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 then going through here that's why i have you know guilford if you look at guilford's um the uh last or i guess the last paragraph the elderly tax relief program it says that under this program, the, the town attempts to freeze, okay? It's not an actual freeze because what they're doing is putting a cap, budgetary restrictions. I think Durham, I think, does the same thing. Um, they're, they're trying to cap the cost. They don't want a, this open-ended mm -hmm. uh, scenario. So it's not, I mean, it's, a, it's called a freeze, but um, if they're going to put a cap and a budget on it, it's not, it's not open-ended, it's not a freeze. I mean, and it's all, it's you know case specific depending on what uh, level of criteria this committee, as you see, came up with this criteria. I didn't make this. This is this is their um, deliberations and their research and their study. This is what they wanted to propose. Uh, so I brought that forward. Um, and honestly, speaking with them, that that you know the council has to make that d decision. Um, even though you you, you well, I think you have a you know a current program that that works. Well, presently, what? What are we doing it's roughly? You, you two is in the first the first item here, right. and Chris can it's can come if you want to come forward. Something. She can elaborate to the fact that so. I don't I actually don't know how long it's been in effect, but you've got this and it's in it, it's in the budget and, and it's, it seems it seems pretty equitable to me. Yeah. Uh, but you basically qualify individuals, and then you have a pot of money, and you divide the money by the number of applicants. Right based on what you approve as a level at this point at $75,000, which comes out to done, uh, annually, 200, yeah. adjusted annually, <laughs> and every year it's a different list of people, or? Well, I'll let yeah, Chris right. speak to that, well, based on the applicant pool. Right, they have to apply every year for the local option. They have, we have a state program too, but that's funded by the state, they apply every other year. But for the local option, they have to apply every year. The income <coughs> levels are about $10,000 higher for the town than it is for the state. Mm -hmm. So some people that don't make it on the state program qualify for the town's program. 
but since we have it at 75,000, it gets divided evenly, basically, by everyone that applies. Some people don't get the full amount. I think last year was around um, $277 per household. So sometimes you might have someone that's only in at 50% because the person applying may own half of it, half of um, interest, and the other half interest is owned by a daughter or son or something like this. So they only get 50% or a third interest sometimes. So we have a choice of either leaving it at $75,000 and let the program go the way it's going, or if you increase that amount, we have a clause in our local, uh, in the ordinance, that says we cannot exceed $300. So you can always change that if you wanted to, to increase that amount. On the freeze program, um, they start at one amount, and every time you have a reval, <coughs> basically, if the numbers go up, then their benefit would go up. So that's what would cost the town more money. Or if your mill rate goes up, if your typical increase in taxes is between two, three, four hundred dollars a year, and that's how much their benefit would be. First year costs nothing. The second year, if your taxes averages an increase of $300, then that's what their benefit is. If the following year goes up again and your tax increase is 200, now their benefit's up to $500, and so on. So in five or six years, you could have, um, it could be did, a steep did, did benefit. I have a question. Uh, only because I have no knowledge of this, now we have seventy-five thousand dollars in there. When did this program start on the on the town level? Is it I think it started in um, '09, or no, actually before that even, because it started at a lower amount and it was increased. I think okay, are, are we expending all of that money? Is, I mean, yes. at that rate. Our goal basically is to use that amount. So and we, we try to that? divide that evenly because actually in the ordinance it says three hundred dollars per household. We don't. We have too many applicants, oh, so we okay, can't we reach do. the 300. So that's why we're under. I see. I, I, but we're pretty close to the 300. Yeah, you're at 273 right now. Right. So right. I mean, we're it's been 275, close. 277. Like so we have somewhere around 650 to 700 applicants. No, we have mm -hmm. about uh, 277. Yeah. Because some of them are at 50 percent, oh. and some are at a third. What? Right, and then if they sell the property or if they die and could you the tie amount this? gets prorated off. Could you tie this to the CPI every year? <coughs> so the price index, whether how it goes up and down. That's how they do rents and stuff, and this way it's a, it's a set figure every year, and it doesn't keep going up. So in other words, the percentage of their taxes go up $300, and the CPI is 2% or whatever, it went up. Okay, so then maybe you could see what the 2% is on the total income, on the total taxation of that, and take that off. I don't know if that would work, if it's a better way to do it instead of piggybacking it like that. <coughs> well, it's not really piggybacking on anything. It's a separate program altogether from the state. Right, but you were saying we but can get if in you're trouble, trying, it can be cut every year more and more. If you were to go with a freeze, Right. If you go with to go to go with a freeze and okay. it, their benefit would increase if the mill rate increases if their taxes increases and you're going to freeze it at a certain amount right. the state well, used yeah. to have a freeze program and it got too costly and that's right. why they dropped the, freeze the program would be, uh, i mean it'd be great if we could do that for everybody but tax burdens on everyone are, are, are a lot right now i would think it if you would keep it to a percentage or something. How, how many uh, people again? Two two, 275 two to 300. Yeah. Well, in the um, Guilford program, I don't know if you have a copy of that. Yeah, I do. I saw it. Survey in there. Yeah. They started in 1999, and um, the amount of benefits, well, of course, the first year was zero, but then this, the following year was 32000 You can see that um, after a revaluation, well, first it went from 32 to 53.7, it was pre reval. And then after reval, that's in 2002, it went to 206,000. That was the cost to the town. At the next reval, it was 337, and currently it cost the town uh, 1,058,000. That's in order for them to keep their tax frozen. Definitely not doable. I think that the system we have works well. Um, yeah, I give them credit for all the work they put into it, but um, 
the, their proposal with the income of seventy thousand dollars, not counting their investments and stuff. I mean, we have families with kids and mortgages and everything else that don't make that much money, and you know, a tax tax relief for some is a tax burden for the rest of us. And um, yeah, and my parents are elderly too, but unfortunately, in our gene pool, we work till we die. So we make my dad work still. But um, <laughs> you know, I, I think we have a system in here that's affordable. It's a little bit of relief, and and uh, I can't support. I won't support what um, what they you know put in there. Um, not, I think that not when we have a grand list that's stagnant, and you know, <laughs> who knows when this great economy is going to get greater. I think the theory behind them increasing that income level is because they feel that uh, they want to try to allow this program for anyone over 65. So if the idea of the program is to try to help anyone over 65 to keep their home, to stay in this town, then you increase the income level. You're making 70000 You can pay your taxes. And right. So this is the idea. Do you want it just for everybody yeah. over 65 or do you want it for those that really need it the most? So if you decide it's for the ones that need no, the most, no, then the they income wanna, level is sufficient. If they want the town to put a lien on the property, I'm all for it. Right. You know, they call right. them a reverse mortgage or something. If they, you know, um, I, I think you're right. I think I'm the only system's one working. Here, but that's, right. where I, that's where I am with it. You could always, could, you could always think about who's set up to instead of 75000 to 100000 and give them a few more bucks. Right. That would be the, the well, smarter thing to do at this point. Right. Well, yeah, and keep right. the same system. In other words, right. Keep the system allow. in place right. and adjust the number. Right. Cap it at a hundred. Right. And this way, it's a little more. Yeah, I support. I support. A little support more like relief for everybody, and uh, and then there's it, a few more people coming on board. Right, and I mean that's just probably the best I think we can do in this kind of an economy and the way things are going. Believe me, I feel for our seniors. I'm going to be one shortly. <laughs> <coughs> but that, that's my idea on the thing. If we boost that up 25000 uh, it's it's a lot of money, but in the grand scheme of things, it's not a lot of money, and these people have worked their whole lives, and they do deserve something, so maybe if we kept the rest of it the way it is and just boosted the number up to 100000 I think that could be doable. And lead the 283 or make it 300 well, well, it's, that's it's in the ordinance that it cannot exceed three hundred dollars. But we can open it up to more people by that, so and they if, can get the maximum. But if you have roughly, if you have three hundred people, people applying and the max benefit of three hundred, that's ninety thousand right. dollars. But some are, you know, that gets weighted third, because some are a half or a third. Right. It's not at a hundred percent. So at a hundred thousand dollars, I think. If we increase that in our next budget, right. if we increase it to 100, I think we would not exceed the $300 right. point. Well, we just make it so it doesn't exceed the 300. I want to keep it at 100,000. Just make the rules like that, right. Right. Mm -hmm. and we're good. I mean, hopefully do you, we can make uh, something a little better for our seniors. Christine, what, do you see the percentage per year, like of I guess new seniors coming or applying, are there? We had about seven or eight new ones, new of applicants last year. We have been getting more people coming on. So is that kind of the average kind of like over the last few years? Seven, I kind of did this and then Yeah, I remember together. talking about this We've three been getting years a lot ago. of phone calls even a couple months ago asking when they can come in to apply. Okay. And they don't apply until February 1st. Well, we can so. put something into the Tucker Times to uh, tell them to come in and apply or do whatever. But we do all the time. Good girl. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I think you have to make a change in the ordinance now, though, right? Right. Yeah. How about it, Mikey? Yep, we'll get it. Good. Okay. All right. right. Thank you. Okay. Um, item D, the North Brantford High School, Totucket Valley <laughs> Elementary School, review of roof plans with Tom Hibbert, the architect. Mr. Hibbert. Yep, Tom is here, and uh, I don't know if we, we brought the plans, but uh, I don't know, if, you know, Al was in to see them and, and made some notes, and uh, I conveyed the, uh, you know, the, the issues that Al had raised uh, to Tom to, to speak to those. So, um, you know, we can begin, I guess, with Al and, and those, those comments, but he said the plans are, are here if anybody wants to see them, and they'll be in my office if anybody wants to review them, but okay. Tom is the architect on the, on the uh, project, and he's here tonight. Good evening. 
whose department? You want to? Um, you want me to ask my questions first, or that's fine. Okay. So I went in and I spent about an hour and a half um, looking at the drawings and just wrote down some things that jumped out at me that you know I thought that we needed to um, have clarified. Um, the probably the biggest one was I didn't I didn't get it. And again, I only was there for an hour and a half, and um, the spec book is that thick. So looking through that, there was a lot of stuff on asbestos. Mm -hmm. And in the bid document that I read, and I read it a couple of times, I saw nothing about handling the asbestos. In some of the notes, <laughs> like maybe your notes, it was that the contractor would um, coordinate with an asbestos contractor. No, uh, what we, <coughs> excuse me, uh, what we did find, we did do a full survey uh, went out, did core cuts, took sampling for asbestos and PCBs. Um, we found that we found we found what we typically find. There wasn't a lot of asbestos on the roof. Uh, we found it where we typically find it. We find it in flashings and in roof penetrations around roof drains. There wasn't a lot. Asbestos and PCBs have been out of building materials for 30 plus years now. So a lot of those roofs have been replaced since it was taken out in the 80s. So we didn't find a lot. What we found was, uh, what we did find for asbestos was crescetile. There are four different types of asbestos. Uh, crescetile is the um, asbestos that you find that is cast into asphalt-based product. It is not, it is non-friable. Um, uh, like I said, limited amounts, and we do have the requirements. The roofing contractors do not hire outside asbestos abatement people. They are trained and they have qualified people, almost all their roofers, have at least the lowest level of asbestos uh, training required mm -hmm. to remove this. So it's, it's well, we're very aware that asbestos is there. It is not a All major right, well, issue. So it's, it's somewhere, and I don't have it in issue. front of me, it was in the bid document that the contractor was. So, so basically, we should just take that out. It yes. shouldn't say that he's going to coordinate with a asbestos contractor if well, he's not. In most cases, what we typically find, he is in fact the qualified asbestos contractor. And in the rare case that he isn't, then he, he is responsible for that. Okay, now, and reading through this, there were, there were, when I read through all the tests, and there's pages and pages of it, there were a couple things that jumped out at me. One was that you guys were clear that, it, well, either you were clear or the person who did the company that did the testing was clear that this document was not to be used for remediation and was not to be used as a bid document. So I know that's called cover your butt, but okay. so we had this big study done and it's clear, you know, that it's not to be used for anything. So that we've already paid for. That, that's my first, uh, you know, that, that, that's in there somewhere. Right. And, and, uh, and the change order. And then this, so, so I see that and then I see that the roofing contractor is going to coordinate with, so so then then I would change it that the roofing contractor is to coordinate or have qualified people handle the asbestos that is is there. Um, I will report to the council that it was. They are clear that the way I read it, if I was bidding it, the way I read it, um, you know, with the language that that you guys had in there. It was clear that here's the roof, you know, here's the high school. You guys are going to put a new roof on it, and if for if somehow, and it's said in several different ways, which I actually like, um, and I'm going to have to we have to reiterate that for the building committee. Basically, they have a document that says, you guys are professional roofers. Here's the building. You're coming to a pre-bid meeting. If there's something that's not in the specs or on the plans, but needed to get the end result that the owner's looking for, it's on you, not an extra to the town. And I read that in there, and I'm like, okay, we're finally getting there. Um, and we go over that at the pre-bid. I tell them, <clears throat> you know, what I tell them flat out is, I'll take your question in writing any way you want to give it to me. You know, you can send it to me an email, you can send me a fax, you can write it on the back of an envelope and hand it to me, but please give it to me in writing. I will respond in writing. I tell them flat out, six, you know, four months down the road, if it isn't in writing, as far as I'm concerned, 
it doesn't exist. So the only thing I didn't want to do was end up in a situation where it goes to bid, because on the actual bid document prepared by Michelle Knockwood, it didn't say anything about asbestos. So I would feel more comfortable if somehow there's some verbiage in there that covers the asbestos that, that was found. And that's something I'd be happy um, to go over with Michelle. Because, you know, especially with bids going the way they are today, it's like get your foot in the door and then say, well, <laughs> You know, there was no asbestos on the bid document, um, no. even though it's in your documents. So that's, that was one of the things. Um, the other thing that I, I and that's is more of um, grammar. The way I read the, on the last page there, the, you have the chimney restoration. Mm -hmm. You can read that two ways. You can read it that you're going to grind all the joints out of the chimney in one inch and you know re rejoin it repoint it and reflash the chimney or you could read it that the spots that are cracked on the chimney have to be done so for me not to have a hole in the drawing i would clarify that and instead i'm thinking you know that chimney was probably built in 1964 it probably should be completely you know grind the whole thing out and repoint it but yeah, what was your what that's was your the idea? verbiage I've been using um, in, in Meriden right now. Didn't have any problem with that verbiage. They're grinding out the whole chimney. Grind the whole chimney. And, and I agree. You're right. It's probably chimneys historically are just chimney, fully exposed to the winter and okay. the, the cold and heat, and there, there's cracks in it. So I might add the word that the chimney is to be restored in its entirety or something like that. Um, the the existing drain system on the roof, that's one that um, I'm, I'm not quite sure how we got to what you're proposing and why maybe, you know, you have several areas, or I don't know, three or six areas where the perimeter I-beam is going to have a hole drilled in it and we're going to go out with a cast iron and, and it's going to go off the edge of the building. Now the building had the building had uh, really an interior drain system. That's an overflow roof drain system. So those are just overflow. <clears throat> it's separate. That's something that came in four or five years ago. Um, we're reusing the primary roof drain system. Okay. And uh, we really haven't had to add a lot of roof drains. Uh, there's no indication really that the primary uh, roof drain system is having hand trouble handling uh, the, the rainfall that you get in the area. It doesn't back up. We would see no, I you know, sedimentation around that. that. In the event a primary roof drain clogs, you can allow four inches of water to back up, then it goes into an overflow roof drain system. Okay. So you just want to have water backing up. And that roof drain system, that overflow roof drain system is to exit to the outside of the building where it will be visible so that somebody will see it and hopefully say, Gee, in the last rainstorm, that wasn't flowing water. So it's kind of a, not only is it a backup system, it's also it kind of a warning that. system. And we chose to go through the I-beam. Uh, we're keeping it above the ceiling tiles in the room. The other thing was to drop it down and go through one of those wall panels. It's a wall system with uh, a aluminum frame with either a window system and higher up and lower down. It has a, an infill panel that's faced with an aluminum, and cutting through one of those is just a risky proposition. A lot of times you cut okay. through one of those, there just isn't a lot left to it structurally. I'm and the cut through the beam I'm fine with the, for an engineer. I'm fine with your, your answer. Yeah. Uh, you know, I was wondering, I, I thought maybe you were like abandoning the existing no. drain system that worked well since 1964. It has, and, yes. Um, or at least you know, most of the time. There was, when we redid the gym roofs a couple of years ago, we dumped some water out on, on the backside of one onto the lower roofs and that roof was leaking at the time. So our public works department did a uh, Rube Goldberg fix and we have a piece of plastic pipe screwed to the wall and it runs horizontal. And so we're not expecting to leave that there after this. And maybe you didn't know that, but well, so no, I, I did address that. Um, you're right. In between the main gymnasium and I think it's your wellness center, 
Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in that lower roof, there are absolutely no roof drains. The way I lay out a roof is I just like to see a V going to the low point with a cricket redirecting into the drains. There's nothing in that lower roof area. We added roof drains in there. What your public works department was, in fact, addressing is it comes down the scupper, and if you have to drop it to a lower roof, there should be hopefully a roof drain nearby. Mm -hmm. Well, there wasn't, and that's a very bad roof because right, it's very stagnant here, and you have to redirect water around a corner. We put a couple roof drains in there, so now those can come straight down, and there'll be a roof drain six feet away. So now those new roof drains you've put on, are we addressing now where it goes after we've caught the, these new drains now come down the side of the building? Yes. Okay, so yeah. in this contract... It's not a roof drain, right we're there? still using the, the scupper. The scupper, yeah. right. So we got a scupper and a leader. Yeah, we can, yeah. And we're coming down to what? It'll have to drain onto the roof and, you know, just six feet away will be a, a, roof, a roof drain. That will, right, where does that roof drain go? We're connecting that to the existing roof drain system. And we're taking it out behind uh, the locker rooms in the back, which is a very, uh, it's a small area, so it can accept water. It can accept sure. the, the flow. Okay. Okay. Then the overflow drains, the, um, on the plans there, the plans we're looking at a flat building. Do they, so where are they positioned? I mean, I, I just, and is there no leader on them? Like they're going to run sheet, they're going to drop out of a scupper or go through the pipe and run it's down just, the brick building? <clears throat> it's just a lamb stump, what they call a lamb stump. Yeah. It's an opening with a little bit of a spout on the so bottom. So I guess what I'm saying, is that dumping on windows or, I mean, did you look at the side of the building when you chose those positions? Yes, we did. We tried to position them away from windows, but there are, are some that are okay. near and above windows. It's virtually impossible to avoid a window on that. Diamond, diamond basically, end. when those are running water, our building guys should say, hey, something's wrong up there. Yes. Okay. I mean, and, and they have a collar on them. Yeah. So it's not like a regular roof train. So the only water that gets into it is the water that falls directly down. So it's a very small amount of water that gets into one of these drains. So the water flowing across the roof will not flow into that overflow drain. There's a collar on it that directs it around the drain. Okay, you answered my questions. So, you're happy? I just have a question. In, there's been a lot of discussion in regards to the unit ventilators that are currently up on the, on yes. the, on the <coughs> roof. And I know that the plans were redesigned to allow for curb cuts, for, for new curb cuts, because the state won't reimburse for the unit ventilators, the cost of that. The, you're not getting new curb cuts, new curbs, new mechanical curbs. So to the put the new mechanical curb. curbs in, do you have to remove the existing unit ventilators? Yes. So is that in the contract that the roofing contractor will remove yes. the unit ventilators? Yes. Take and them it, off the roof? It's a, it's a unit ventilator. It's not an HVAC unit. They're just really fan units. You know, the large ones probably weigh 100 pounds, if that. So if two men can, they have an electrician disconnect it and move it over to the side. They take out the old roof curb, which is a good idea. It's been there since 1964. Put in a new aluminum insulated roof curb, flash up onto that, and put the unit ventilator back on. I know there's been some discussion, I don't want to say too much about it, that they're looking at starting to replace those, those uh, mechanical units themselves because many of them are but my, my 20, question 30, is, is the, is the roofer, is the, whoever wins the bid, is part of the bid that they disconnect the existing yes. unit ventilator and move it? So if that, if there was a new unit ventilator that was going to go in place that we were going to install or whatever, could it be done at the same time? <clears throat> yes. Um, the contract reads that the roofing contractor is responsible to remove it and to reinstall it, and uh, I guess your so to facilities. On that, because yes. that was that was my other question. We just need to change the verbiage on that so that if we found some money and bought new ones, we need because now and I, I when I read that I thought you know I think I'd heard talk about getting some new ones, so I think mm -hmm. they're going to remove stuff off and install either 
the same one or an equal number of new units that supply would, by would your facilities cost. people may be there with a new unit to install at that time that's still in discussion and I really don't want to speak for the facilities people without having you know that's kind right of there but if they're told that you know they have to we because we, the way it reads in the in your document now is that they're going to take them off and put them back so what I'm saying is this new one may have a different flashing method or something we don't want to have to pay extra for that and if we just change the bid document that they're going to take six of them off and put six back and they may or may not be the same or new yeah we could make that change I mean it's like you said right now with the facilities people it's still in a state of flux and who knows we may and actually we would rather have the roofer do it than any of our guys yeah. for sure then they own it we and certainly we don't want our we don't want our people we don't want our people going around going up on a brand new roof, roof and then right. we have a leak and it's going to be well your people your right. facility people put this new thing on there right. no right right buy yeah. the new if the, if the board of ed thinks they need some new things buy them and have it done have the roofer installed the only thing is they they need to coordinate whether the fan they buy goes that. on that curb because there's curb adapters too for when they change fans no we have it in, I mean he's gonna you know he has to go through the shop drawing process mm -hmm. submit those to be the sizes to be reviewed and your facilities people can do that you have an HVAC person on staff I believe so that we get the correct curb size right. so we don't mm -hmm. have to do it we don't want an adapter because right. an adapter is an extra piece of flashing an extra piece of leak. extra sealant or butyl tape it's just yeah, not a potential leak. <coughs> roof, you may as well put the right curve. I mean, right. That's right. That needs to be coordinated. Right. Then so the only other. So you want the roof to remove and replace. replace. Remove and, and reinstall. And, and whether reinstall it's new or the new existing. New or existing. Okay. okay. All right. Yep. Then the only other comment I'll make about this process is, and I don't. This isn't really up to you, but. Uh, no, so I'm happy to hear that you've talked to the, like the facilities guys at the school system, but I think when we're going to do something like this, we need to have, and, and before, before we as a council send it out, we have our public <coughs> works director, our building official, the, the facilities guy at the school system, the maintenance guy. and the maintenance, and they need to take these documents, look at them, and give us a high five that, hey, we're good with this. And, and, you know, instead of after the fact, we hear from each and every one of them that, well, I wasn't asked. I wouldn't have ever let them do this. The state submittal process that we have been through and completed requires that I review this with the building official, uh, the fire marshal, mm -hmm. um, the health official, and believe it or not, the ADA coordinator. That is actually required. It's usually yeah, obviously not much responsibility here and as you already know I've you know reviewed this I've worked uh, mm -hmm. I would say fairly closely with your facilities people yeah. Okay. but I, I agree with you I think we need a sign off from those and people. that's more of a policy thing that right. we'll have to do with our, well, on our own. yeah on our, not 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 with him so, so to speak but with you know our guys need to spend the time you know because I called a few of them today and some of them had, you know, had seen the drawings. Or, right. So. Okay. Okay. That sounds good. To, um, the other, the other, well, we have Tom here. Um, <coughs> the issue going forward, well, the other issue, the other capital issue, is the uh, Tatucket Valley Elementary School roof uh, project, which it appears at this point is going to have to be pushed off into. Uh, next season's you know 2015 but the other issue is the energy issue in terms of, of you know solar panels and possibility for the you know solar panels and you know quick side you know discussions with Tom that you know new roofs support new certainly can support you know life of a panel matches the life of a expectancy of a new roof 20 you know 30 years um, you know, I don't know if you have any questions uh, for Tom at this point, uh, or that's just something you want to uh, revisit. You know, down the road when we talk about uh, Tucket Valley. Um, 
but it's just it's something that's percolating at, at this point and we will have to put a schedule together and, and a decision on a uh, TVES uh, school project at some point. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, I think it's worth exploring the opportunity. I think the school system wants to do that as well. I haven't heard differently uh, that they'd like to pursue it. Um, and I think the timing is right is why I'm raising it. Mm -hmm. And why does the TVS roof project have to <coughs> go into 2016 or 15? W well, I thought the whole reason that we delayed the high school is so that we could do the two together. Right, but it's January now, and we're just getting, and we, we don't even have, we don't even have the high school roof bid out yet. We well, don't we purposely held that bid, though, so that we could do the two together. I mean, that was, that was the whole thing that was brought before the building committee, is to hold the bid on the high school roof project because the TVS roof project was approved in the, we were waiting to approve the CIP plan, but that was included in the CIP plan. But originally, they were ready to put the high school roof bid out a couple months ago. They were gonna get the bid documents right. out and everything, but then it was decided, they were told that it would be best to hold off until the springtime so that they could put the both of the bids out together to get better pricing. Yeah, so I, this I, is the first that I heard that the TVS roof project is being delayed. I I, I, I say it's delayed. I'm just raising the issue. I don't see how you can match up and and you know, maybe I'm wrong, but to I, I don't even know where that process is in, in terms of. I don't think the the school has, has started that process in in terms of trying to match up where where this project is because obviously yeah this one this one we missed the window. It has to be done in the school vacation summer break. So this was originally slotted for 2013. We missed that window. Uh, I don't know that they had done the, the work to get from an application standpoint to get to the point where we are now with putting this out on, on the street for bid to get something in, in February or, or March or April. Tom, I mean, we, we had talked about this to try and get this ready so we can certainly hit the summer of 2014, this summer, to get this high school roof done, I don't know that we can get, you know, you know, out on the street, and I don't know that we get any economies of scale uh, of doing it. Um, I, uh, I agree with Mike on this. I, I don't know who told the building committee that you'd get a better number by doing two schools at opposite ends of the town, but um, as a contractor, I'm telling you that's misinformation. You're going to bid the one at the high school and you're going to bid the one up there and um you know were you going to bid it were you going to combine them in one and bid it i have no idea what that yeah, i mean that's just what the you know, building committee was told. if you put it out there and you bid you know some roofer was going to be less money on one and some roofer you know and you don't want to take that away either you know and the way with all these bids work you know so, so one of these companies is going to get the high school and then you know or get another school and they may have bid that low where if they're going to bid the two schools <clears throat> they may bid the other one high and figure well if we get one we're fine you know so I, I see no benefit to have ever put them out at the same time but i wasn't i don't know who was at the building committee telling them that and again i mean we need this roof for this summer uh, you know from my standpoint uh First of all, with the high school, I would encourage you to get on the street to bid. Right now, the right. roofers have got very sharp pencils. They may not be as sharp uh, two, three months from now. Mm -hmm. So we mm -hmm. took a couple bids recently, very aggressive numbers. And uh, I, I think you're right. Uh, the two schools are different enough. A lot of times, this is finding the right marriage. Right. You know, the contractor who's right size to do a, a particular job or has a particular piece of equipment or capability that might give him an advantage on the high school and maybe not so much on the other school. So it, it, it is difficult. I've done multiple bids and I end up with a variety of contractors, not, not somebody right. doing all the roofs. Historically, I, I, would, uh, I would agree. They haven't started the other school yet, so we need to put this out to bid. No, 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 that, that's fine. Yeah. I mean, I just, and I know that they were looking to put the high school bid right. documents out you know, late January, early February, out on the street. I think it's hard to do two at once anyway and keep mm -hmm. track of it. Um, to do that, 
So I was just wondering whose decision it was to delay <coughs> the other school. I just think it's a, I, I don't know that there's anything that's been started. Yeah, so it well, didn't even start it then. Well, yeah, all I, mean, I know we, is that, that there was the, the so walkthrough with the architects and, you know, all of that stuff, but that was all done before we had the A24 referral and everything else. So we finally, we have all those ducks in a row, those that just happened with mm -hmm. the TBS roof project at our December, you know, we accepted the A24 proposal and all that stuff. Right. So it, the next step would be to interview, you know, put out for the architects to bid and then accept a bid for architectural service. I mean, that's the way that would work. Yeah, I mean, I'll, that would go. I'll, I'll, yeah, I, I'll certainly review from, from the Board of Ed side to see, you know, where, they're, where they are, what their status report is on TBS. I just don't know that you know, you can get, I mean, by the time you get that out there, because it has, only because it has to be done, it would have to be done the same time as the other school. I, I understand June, that because we it, started the high school project last right, spring right, and we just I, got state approval right, in December. Yeah, and that's, that, so that, that was that like whole, nine months. That whole process, right. So I, I don't so see. Focus on the high school right. Yeah, we, we need to get this out. We need to get this out. And I just, just from a clear, you know, logistic standpoint, calendar wise, I don't see how we get. Okay. TBS. Yeah. I got a question for you. Do you. What do you know about solar panels and their efficiency? Uh, well, we have done a number of solar projects at schools. We've done, uh, well, as we far as being state. in the Northeast and, you know, the sunlight we get and all this other stuff. They can be cost effective. We, uh, going back three years, we did four roof replacement and four photovoltaic projects at uh, in East Haven. Uh, we projected their annual savings at $60,000 a year spoke with my energy consultant, they were saving $70,000, so that take them to a inflation, we're right on track. And what did the solar panels and all the whole system cost them? Um, I, gotta be honest with you, three years ago, I, I forgot. That's okay. I, it was a couple deal. million dollar job. I was trying to get a grasp on the solar stuff, to be honest with you. The, the key to it is it can be very cost effective for you. It starts with really looking at what you're energy consumption is, getting the correct size solar panel, you don't want to make it too big, you really want to be competing against your peak energy usage, which is probably 22, 23 cents a kilowatt hour, you make it too big, you're going to be competing against, you know, 16, 17 cents a kilowatt hour, and you, you know, that, you don't have much uh, price difference, so that's really your profit margin. Um, the other thing is to make sure you submit both your, your uh, get all your reimbursements, because you can get your Connecticut Clean Energy Fund reimbursement. We did very well over in East Haven. We got the, the energy fund money to pay for, I think, 48% uh, of it, which is pretty high. Then the other 52%, if all the paperwork is done correctly, can get reimbursed on the uh, Office of School Facilities side. So they ended up with uh, mid-70% percent, percent, uh, reimbursement rate between the two funds. Now, you can't run a school of that size completely on solar. Absolutely not. You okay. wouldn't want to try. Okay. As I it's, said, you're really, you're really cutting off of that peak load. Right. I'm just trying to learn from you what, yeah. what the whole deal is, you know, with the solar stuff. Yeah, the base load energy is actually supplied to you very cost effectively. It's that peak energy load, which for most schools is right when solar is at its peak, it's between 10, 11 o'clock in the morning to about 2 o'clock in the afternoon. And that's when you're getting your maximum benefit from solar panels. So schools' peak energy usage is right when solar panels are get are most effective. So that, that's a good marriage. That's a good alignment in terms of usage and production. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, moving on. Um, and Michael, just. Why we're on this quick, I had stopped at the PD, and I know they're starting to do the painting and kind of backing what Al was saying when the bid is written and whatnot. Um, when a job's finished, does someone go there and check to see the job that's done? Because um, I would advise somebody to stop at the PD and okay. check the painting job. I'm not sure what the bid said, but um, there are some things I think that should be addressed. Yeah, I can do that tomorrow. Um, 
Item E, proposed installation, a gate for Reeds Gap Road, Northford. Yeah, uh, John, I talked with John about this. Um, he, he has it, and, and Kurt's going to uh, work with him. And I think this is an item we'll just, we're just going to have to bring back to, uh, to the next meeting on the 20, 21st. All right. Okay. Uh, item F, the CIP. Yeah, um, we got the um, approval, the letter from OPM is there. We had, I think we had uh, touched base on that uh, earlier in the meeting. Um, but there is the official um, authorization from OPM that grants us uh, permission to, to, to do that. So I think what, what we can do for the next meeting is um, bring, bring that issue back to approve the, the entire uh, plan, I believe. Is that where we're at, Anthony? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So um, we'll we'll, uh, we'll bring that back for uh, for discussion as well. Okay. Uh, item 12G, revised 2014 meeting schedule. Yeah, that's in there. I noticed um, there was a mistake on the refer budget referendum date. It's uh, May 13th, 2014. So that was uh, that was amended, and. Um, Looking for your uh, approval on that amendment to the schedule. There was an oversight. I didn't catch that before. I make a motion to accept the revised uh, WPCA and Town Council meeting Second. agenda for 2014. Second. Moved by Councilor Angeloni, seconded by Councilor Fusi. Roll call. Mayor Candelora? Yes. Councilor Angeloni? Yes. Councilor Caprio? Yes. Councilor Diamond? Yes. Councilor Esposito? Yes. Councilor Fonin? Yes. Councilor Fusi? Yes. Councilor Rose? Yes. Uh, item 13, new business discussion and action. Item A, resolution, historic documents, preservation grants. Right, this is the um, ongoing uh, second part of that application that Lisa put in in May uh, for the uh, preservation of records in the uh, the vault. So do we need to adopt the resolution? Yes. I make a motion to adopt the resolution for historic documents preservation grant as submitted. I'll second it. Moved by Councilor Angeloni, seconded by Councilor Fusi. Roll call. Mayor Candelara? Yes. Councilor Angeloni? Yes. Councilor Caprio? Yes. Councilor Diamond? Yes. Councilor Esposito? Yes. Councilor Fonin? Yes. Councilor Fusi? Yes. Councilor Rose? Yes. Item 13B, budget schedule. Draft recommendation 2014. Yeah, it's just a, a draft at this point subject to your approval, but that would be how the dates uh, line up in terms of getting ready for our budget season. I just have a question. Are we going to meet with department heads like we did last year on Saturdays? prior to the budget to have them give like an overview or for us to ask questions and things. We've actually done it for the last two years, right. I think. Yeah. Well, last year we expanded it. We did We did more, more than the prior Than, than the key, right. right. I frankly found it to be useful if, if we, we could we get several of them at like limited. Like, yeah. 20 minutes or. And tell them they've got X, X amount of time. Right. I, I think some people got I don't want to point fingers, but some people gave us more information than right. we really needed and right. it was really useful. Yeah. <coughs> yeah, what I'll do if, with the council's permission, I'll go over it with Michael, put together a schedule and email everyone, you know, a few dates that. Saturdays work right. the best for us in mornings and we tried to condense them. I think we did two, maybe three. Or something. We did two yeah. and we tried to condense right. and, and keep. I think you cut it up, didn't you? Like yeah. You yeah. It into also, the major departments, maybe their time allotment should be slightly larger. Larger than, right. yes. You know, like one of the smaller they, departments. Are they coming in, so we're talking to them before they've done their budget? Or no. No, no they've no. already submitted they've to already Michael. Submitted. They've submitted to Michael. He's made a recommendation on it. And then they're coming to make a pitch to us, and we're trying to refine what they're asking for and what we can manage. You, you've done it with us uh, on a Saturday. Yeah. Before. But I'm wondering if, if we want to do something different with some of the departments, 
you know, it, it isn't fair to them, you know, instead of doing it in the 11th hour, we should tell them now. Well, the, I, I guess part of the idea is that we don't know, when does grand list have to be certified by the end of January? Is that it? So we don't know some of our, we don't know our revenue stream at a certain point. So it's... It's just a little less than last year. Well, I'm, I'm sure it's in that same area. Um, but I think we need to just have a little bit more basis in that area so that we know where we're, we're kind of looking at when they make their pitch. I think um, what, what I was talking about, and I would agree with, is rather than blindsiding people in the, in the departments, right. maybe meet with them before they start actually putting their budgets together so that they're more in sync on what we're looking to spend. Well, I mean, they're doing that, that right now. I mean. But they're due to the town manager at the end of this month. Well. I mean, if you want to convey right. to they're me. they're maybe addressing that after you're, you're prepared, we're going to be, the council would like to, you know, like they've done the last couple of years, meet with you. Hmm. What it sounds like is we need to give Michael direction on what we're looking for. I don't know if you read it, but he put out, I believe, an email to all department heads to come in with a zero budget increase. That sounds reasonable to me. Well, yeah, I mean, based on, uh, there are still contractual obligations, obviously, right. but, yeah, I mean, there's not going to be any, at this point, I can't see, you know, so it's about necessity, but not, not, uh, not the wants. Yeah. All right, well, then, mm -hmm. no, but, but if there, I mean, if for the council, if there, you know, if there's something that you want to discuss with me, uh, or you know, for me, a, a, a department, uh, an idea, a concept, or you know, whatever issue, you know, feel free to bring it to me uh, before you know. Be, I mean, we're in the process of bringing it all together. So if you want to bring it to me now, so we can get answers and look at things that that may be of concern or me, you know, you may have questions about. So, but we, we, we really don't, don't have that on the agenda now. Um, unless we talked about it, because we talked about the budget schedule, not really. I mean, yeah, it's going to add an item for 21st. I was just talking, you know, informally. If you, you know, you just give me a call, come in the office, sit down, and, and talk budget. I'm not so sure that there's going to be much in the way of surprises to town departments. Uh, the economy and, and our approach to the budget has been pretty consistent for the last few years. And while there have been requests for amounts of money that exceeded prior years, they've been scrutinized pretty carefully. I agree. So, I mean, you're concerned that we're kind of ambushing people. I, I just don't. Uh, I appreciate the concern, but I don't think it's a real fear. I, I, I think people anticipate. It's going to be another tough year, <clears throat> right? But I, I, you know, I think there's some things that we need to look at that that could save us some money, um, that may or may not be welcomed by some of the departments. <laughs> so, um, so you know what? Let's. Um, I'm going to make a motion to amend the agenda for where are we? Uh, G, right. right after G, we can do it there. We're on 13B. No, we're on 13B. 13 so, so do you want make a D? D. This is no D. Business, so D. 13D. 13D. So you're adding an agenda item, 13D. We can what is the uh, agenda tonight? item for? Well, that he's going to announce yeah. now. What's that? Item D. To, um, to just talk about some different ways to possibly save some money in uh, some uh, departments. So it's a discussion on the budget Without for 2014-15. Right. Okay. So that's the. I'll second Al's motion. All right. Motion by Councillor Rose on cost savings ideas for different departments for the upcoming 2014-15 budget. Seconded by Councillor Angeloni. Yes. Roll call. Mayor Candelora. Yes. Councillor Angeloni? Yes. Councillor Caprio? Yes. Councillor Diamond? Yes. Councillor Esposito? Yes. Councillor Fawnen? Yes. Councillor Fusey? Yep. Councillor Rose? Yes. Um, All right. In regards to the proposed budget schedule, um, Mike, can you get us, like, the, I know there's a whole publication date, like the drop dead date as to when the budget has to be finalized so we can, in April, so we can kind of work backwards so we know what kind of budget dates we're looking at? Okay, right. 
Um, item C, easement to drain over property at 49 and 55 Fowler Road, North Bramford. Uh, good evening. Um, the property owner of 4955 Fowler Road uh, recently put an addition, um, actually a new building on the property. It's R&R &R Trucking um, on Fowler Road. Um, they went through the plain zoning process, the weapons process. Um, they looked at, it's part of the improvement. Um, if they were originally going to install a, a drain in um, Fowler Road to take some water from the property and then uh, dis discharge it into the existing town drainage system. Uh, a couple things happened. They ran into an issue with, with a gas line that um, conflicted with their proposed location. And, and during the development of the property, they found a drain on their property that was low enough that they could discharge to. They came back to the Wellness Commission and asked if they could install a, a catch basin on Fowler Road and basically drain it into their property, um, into their existing drainage system. And then that, outlet, you know, that, that outlets uh, eventually to the, to the Farm River. There's a minor modification that's approved by the uh, Wetlands Commission. Uh, the, the one thing that a condition that the Wetlands com uh, Commission added was to make sure that they granted a uh, rights drain to the, to the town onto their property. Uh, water <laughs> was already drained in there in the past, but it basically formalized what was happening, and, and they, uh, they con constructed a structure that discharge into a riprap swale onto the property. So as part of that, uh, they prepared a proposed drainage easement over their property, over the, uh, that uh, swale, into their existing drainage system. It was uh, prepared by their attorney, reviewed by the uh, town attorney's office. Um, and it's before you, basically, they operate that, that system. It's, but it just gives us the right to drain on their property um, officially. Um, and there's a suggested motion, basically, a uh, proposed motion to authorize uh, for the town council to accept the attached drainage easement agreement dated December 13th, 2013, which grants a drainage easement to the town of North Cranford over 4950 Fowler Road, and to authorize the town manager to execute said agreement and file the executed agreement on the North Cranford land record. And this was reviewed by the town attorney. Yes, yeah, this was reviewed and approved by the town attorney's office. Okay. I'll move the motion as Kirk just read it. Second. second. Moved by Councilor Angeloni, seconded by Councilor Rose. Rose. No, Councilor Rose moved. Oh, I'm sorry, Councilor Rose. Moved. moved by Councilor, seconded by Councilor Esposito. Roll call. Mayor Candelora? Yes. Councilor Angeloni? Yes. Councilor Caprio? Yes. Councilor Diamond? Yes. Councilor Esposito? Yes. Councilor Fawnen? Yes. Councilor Fusi? Yes. Councilor Rose? Yes. Okay, item D. Um, ways to save or ideas to discuss to save money in departments for the 2014-15 budget. So, and I probably need some help from you, Anthony. <laughs> um, on the PD department, What's their, is, I'm, I'm remembering their overtime account is like four to 500,000 as budgeted each year, or? Uh, it will have to tell you what I'm You know what, could you do that? I would love to. So my thoughts are this. That, that overtime budget bites us in the butt every year. Not every year, that it's, you know, it turns out, you know, $150,000 salaries, and then that's multiplied into the pension. And they're always shorthanded, so we got guys that are working two and three shifts. So you guys are going to think I'm nuts, but if, if I remember that number, and that's the right number, I would want the police commission and the chief to tell us if we eliminate that, how many officers does it take, new officers, to replace it? And, you know, I mean, if it's... If it's Four to five hundred thousand. I think uh, I think an officer costs us about a hundred and twenty. Oh, you mean how many new officers right. would brand new would officers? Supplement in, in other words, two time. officers, and maybe it's maybe it's five officers and it won't work. But if it's two officers or three officers, we may have a two hundred thousand dollars savings. So but then, if it's not a lateral move and it's a new officer, then it's a whole year before that officer comes on board. So why is it a year? 
because they have to go to the academy the for academy training, and months, then they have to No, there's ride. a whole bunch of retired officers out there. Well, that's there. a lateral move, you so that would be so Even that would be a lateral that they don't have to go through. Sure we do this right, so 205. That's it? He asked for 246, me and Andrew covered the 220, you guys gave him 205. Okay, it won't work. Well, not, <laughs> not, not only that, but you got to think that we're going to go into negotiations and finish that before we do anything. The pension. Before we start hiring people. Right, but we can eliminate overtime without doing the, without doing the pension. Right, but what I'm saying is the new guys will be on. On the old pension. No, no you got to factor in, I believe, uh, we went through this, I think, uh, at one point, didn't we, with... Uh, you got to factor well, we in for, for, yeah, for uh, vacation, sick time, bereavement. Um, Plus, I think they're going to use the Right, that's why. Yeah. If I, it, it's see, I, I was really crazy. based on it. Two officers, if we needed yeah, two new officers to cover it and we had 400 trials to work, track. you might save money. Right. But if it's only, yeah. 200. the last budget was only 200 and some thousand, it's not going to work. So, okay. Mm. See, that was simple. Hey, you got to think outside the box. <laughs> Right. Item 14, citizen statements and petitions. I thought. Hey, Mr. Potter, yeah, nice right. to see you. I couldn't get here last time. Uh, I was iced in my driveway. <laughs> <laughs> but I watch you on TV. I look good on camera. Happy New Year, by the way. Happy Thank New Year. Congratulations on all your elections. Thank you. Uh, I got like a comment I want to th compliment you on working with the Potato Fest and you can have a person in that seat but as you if you know Roseanne that's and I you know hopefully she'll go for it but she's an excellent person but you need the continuity be like me Vinny coming up to your business and say well I'll order whatever you need this week and order seven times what you can afford how long were you going to be in business but I'm a person sitting there right but I'm not qualified to sit there that's the difference uh, and so I'm glad, and also, you'd be surprised. It's a potato fest, but it's also an economic development type of event. I have a friend in the National Guard when I was in. He showed up at, at the last couple potato fest. Got the bug from going once. So they, you're drawing North Brantford into the spotlight from all surrounding areas, uh, surrounding areas. Now, he might not have enough gas to get home. He's going to stop, and he might want a pizza. He might stop in town. So. The fest will get them here, and just like when I go to New Hampshire on vacation, I don't come back to Connecticut for gas or something. I go to the local town. So again, you're going to spend a few bucks, but you're going to hopefully trickle down effect into the businesses in town as well. And, and it's good for morale in the town, but I, I see, like you said, out of the box, Al, I see more happening from this fest, and it does bring attention to North Brantford. And there's another guy I worked with in the phone company. He also uh, keeps asking me, hey, you going to the fest this year? You know, so again, they've come, they liked what they saw, and they keep coming. And so they're going to talk to their friends, so I think it'll spread out. Mm -hmm. uh, I've got a question for Kurt on the bridge that's going to happen over here. <coughs> How, yeah, how long did Malty take? It, it was over a year, wasn't it? The multi uh, lane uh, Route 17 multi lane bridge. Oh, right past there, multi lane. Yeah, right, right. Um, Dahlberg's house. I think that was a sort of a long season. Oh yeah, yeah. It was ridiculously long. <laughs> I, I think what they're trying to do is, is to condense it. They're basically going to build a temporary bypass, and then they get to go forever. Full, no, you have to go full bore on, on the new one. The other one was staged construction. You mm -hmm. had to basically build half the bridge and the other half. And so, this should be a faster process. In theory, do you trust the state? Oh, I, uh, <laughs> there's always things that, that could I come mean, up. The, the idea is to try to minimize the unknowns and, and get this thing in. But, well, you um, know, in, in defense, luckily it's a residential area that was affected up there, but it was still, I mean, it, it was Take ridiculous. And I'm not a contractor, I'm not a, a bridge builder, but that was ridiculous. With how long that took. You don't want that to happen down here. Now, if you go further up on Route 17 in Durham, I don't know, uh, they had an issue where for three or four weeks you couldn't go past uh, <coughs> State Coast Road or something, or, or by the well drill. They, I don't know if a private contractor did that repair, but it was a three or four week thing, and the road you, you know, was backed, paved, new guardrails, and 17 was opened up again very quickly. 
So again, I mean, what we saw in Northford, I sure as heck don't want to see happen on Route 80. And, and once, and even this job up here, I mean, once the state starts something, it's like, it's like they plant seeds in the garden, but they forget to the water, and then they wonder where their plants are. I mean, for the track record the state has in our town, it's not too impressive. So, I mean, I hope you can really hold their feet to the fire. Yeah, I'll, and I just will point out that they have a tight window. What I mean, the biggest thing they're trying to do is try to get a lot of utility work coordinated on yeah. the heads. Um, what they're talking about is actual sort of start when they start to put the temporary bridge in. Yeah. So when they're finished with the new bridge. What do you have? So they're, they're predicting 75 days. I mean, that, at this point. And 400 nights. Well, it's about <laughs> just construction. That's okay. fair schedule at this point. Well, I just hope, I mean, uh, I hope for the cattle panels because they're great. They're my body, body shop choice, unfortunately. Uh, you know, and you can't, like I said, you can inconvenience residents in Northford, fine. But when you start taking money out of businesses' pockets that are already almost empty anyway because of economic conditions, it, you really got to hold the state to the fire on this one. Next question I have is flat roofs, solar panels. What happens when we have another 40 inch snowstorm and the town crew or whoever has to get up on that roof? Uh, do you play a guessing game and hope once you install solar panels you never have a big snowstorm? Does the added weight to the roofs? I mean, and again, I respect protocol. I would have liked to ask this question while the engineer was here, but it's, you know, this is the only time we get to speak. So, I mean, I have questions about that. I've had them in the past. It's I a believe, wonderful thing, but what I happens? believe down the road we are going to have someone come in on solar panels. I know she spoke with Michael and she called me, so there will be someone coming back. All right. Are, are they, can they be removed in case of an emergency? And, but at what cost? Or, you know, and you're adding weight, right? I'm sure they're not super light. So you're adding weight to the existing structure that was engineered years ago. Probably not to hold that weight, but probably a, a Al, can you give me some advice on this, sir? Um, solar panels work well in the summer when the kids aren't in school. <laughs> yes. They only work if there's state or federal money to help you. And the little known uh, item that all the guys pushing solar panels don't tell you is they lose the amount of voltage each year. Um, they were a small out. amount. Yeah. So a lot of these deals are like on a 20-year deal, and guess what? Then the town's stuck with no money to replace them and yeah. has to pay to replace them. So you want to be real careful looking at solar. And yeah. You know, I mean, I didn't want to get into that now. We'll do well, that. Yeah. No, we'll do someone, that someone, when the guy yeah. comes with his bells and whistles and wants to sell But again, before you sign a contract for a 25-year roof, do you want people back right. up there drilling holes to install solar panels in your 25-year roof that now might be down to five because of the holes that leak, the extra See, weight? All these guys <laughs> love to talk about solar panels on a 20-year plan. Yes. None of them want to talk about it on a 50-year plan. Sort of like the windmills that only last for 10 years. Yeah. Right, yeah. But they lose the voltage they put out each each year, each okay. Camp. And, and I, I, I'm, I'm just trying to look out for what the town is best. I mean, I could care less if they go in or don't go in. I don't think I'm going to put, ever put them on my house. I have enough problem with snow and ice in the winter. I don't want any more weight on my roof. I don't want me on my roof. So, uh, I mean, again, this is something I don't know if anybody's given it any thought. But Cliff, I mean, you've are got. You, are you concerned that, that these plans that we're looking at now include solar panels? No, I'm, I'm curious that the fact they don't allow for the extra weight <coughs> or how to remove them in an emergency. I mean, if, if we have another bad winter, the town crew was up on every school roof, wasn't it? Yeah, there's, there's no way to remove them. Yeah, well, about two for years ago, <laughs> we did have a. A presentation by a solar company. I mean, remember that, that the who whole thing, that? right? For that reason, right? You know? Yeah, those and were all questions yeah. we had then, and it's basically the, the same, same people, people. Yeah, yeah. from two years just ago. Ground them if you want. If it's that, the same yeah. roof does again. Yeah. No, I know. Huh? This roof doesn't. Is your oh. here now? No. Okay. <laughs> no, even in school we're doing it. Okay. Well, I'm saying ground mount them if that important. But again, stay away from the roofs. We have so many problems as it is. Oh, there's issues of ground mounting too. You got kids smashing them and. All that fun stuff. Yeah. And Al's yeah. always remember? said, and I remember vividly, <laughs> flat roofs in Connecticut don't work, right? Well, How many years ago did I hear that from you? Yeah, really and and it's come back so many times. Yeah. And I mean, <coughs> you don't want new holes 
and a new roof that are going to be a low problem. That's just my view. But again, I, I respect the protocol. I, did, I, I didn't want to throw it out there then. The other question. You had some serious questions tonight, but you had nobody from the building committee here that could help you. You're guessing what they had to say. Shouldn't they, when you're going to have an architect or somebody here, shouldn't somebody from that commission be here? So you can just turn to them and say, well, what did you discuss? You guys are trying to guess what they said. Rose was there. I, I, I was at, that's okay. why I brought up the issues, because I was at all the building committee All right, meetings. so, but I mean, but they didn't have some answers, right? Or like, with the bid, there wasn't well, any. It, it, well, because it's, it's on the agenda for the next meeting. Okay. So now I can go back to them with things right. that we discussed. All right, it just seemed like there was a little bit of confusion, and again, you know I love communication between the town council and board of ed and other departments. I mean, big problems start out with small sayings, and I'd like to see, you know, the town's doing okay. We can always move forward and communication keep talking to people. And once again, Happy New Year. Stay warm. Don't slip. All right. <laughs> Thank you, Cliff. Thank you. Okay. <coughs> Any other further <coughs> statements? Okay. Should, should we, before we go into the executive session, I don't know, if, should we table it without John here? I, I've got uh, I've got the Murma thing to cover with you, okay. and uh, with Anthony, and then um, the we could prob we could probably release him, and then yeah, we can go into I got the the briefs as well on on the uh, other matters. Yeah, <coughs> yeah, I, I, I just think it done. I make a motion to go into executive session to include the town manager and the <coughs> town finance direction director for item 15A. Second. Moved by Councillor Angeloni, seconded by Councillor Diamond. Roll call. Mayor Candelora? Yes. Councillor Angeloni? Yes. Councillor Caprio? Yes. Councillor Diamond? Yes. Councillor Esposito? Yes. Councillor Fawnen? Yes. Councillor Fusi? Yes. <coughs> Councillor Rose? Yes. 